Hey friends, Michael Kingswood here, and it is Saturday. It's story time for Story Saturday. And we are continuing on our journey through epic, fun fiction that I write for you every week. I mean, I write it all the time, but I bring it to you every week, at least those weeks that uh, don't get crushed by life, the universe, and everything, which... uh, The first two months of this year has been kind of weird for me, so I've been bad about this podcast, but we are coming through the grommet, and we are back on a schedule, (laughs) for the most part, and we are continuing on the stories. As you guys who have been following me know, last year I did pretty epic stuff, wrote more than 52 stories in the year, put them out in these uh, five great short story volumes, and kickstarted them. The... Volumes 1 through 4 have already been out to everybody. Volume 5, we kickstarted at the end, at the middle of January. And now it's the end of February, and I've gotten all, except for a couple of the stories, back from the proofreader. And Volume 5 is going out to the backers here this month, in March. It's now March 1st. And uh, that's going to be awesome. So we are going through on this channel, reading through all those stories too, so you can hear them, and read them, and buy them. And it's great. Uh, This week, we are reading the fourth story in the collection that was put out last year, the first volume. It's called A Nose for Tacos. It is a meet-cute short romance set right here in San Diego, where I live. And so you guys are going to like it. You're going to like it because I wrote it, and because you like me, because I wrote it, and I like it. It's fun. It's a cute little story. You'll enjoy it. Sit back, relax. I'll read it to you. And then uh, we'll talk again on the backside. How did people survive without glasses? Logically, Kyle knew that wasn't a problem for many, probably most people throughout history, but then most people don't have the 2300 uncorrected vision that he did. Still, just then, as he was down on his knees, grabbing around for the spectacles that had just been knocked off his head, that question flashed through his mind. And then he saw only stars as something smacked into him across the side of his head, and he fell the rest of the way down to the ground. Laughter from above and the flare of pain from his nose as it impacted with the gravelly pavement of the blacktop he had been standing on just a few moments ago drove all thought from his mind for a moment that felt like an eternity. He lay there, breathing through his mouth and tasting the stone below him, and groaned. The laughter stopped, and a rhythmic thumping sounded on the pavement next to him, Then from the corner of his eye, a blurry shape came to a halt at his side. Hey, Cal, you all right, dude? Cal pushed himself back up onto his hands and knees, ignoring the throbbing in his nose, and then rolled over into a sitting position and looked up at the shape. This close, he could recognize Tim, mostly. Straight, but still tussled, light brown hair that hung to just above his shoulders. Deep brown eyes and a narrow face that was pinched in concern. He wore loose-fitting dark blue athletic shorts and a white tank top made of wicking material. His chest muscles were clearly visible, what little of them he had. He kept on dribbling his basketball as he awaited Kyle's response. Cal reached up to touch his nose and hissed as a new lance of pain struck him. Might have broke my nose, he said. Tim winced and ceased dribbling the basketball, holding up his right hand, palm open, toward the hoop that Kyle and his friends had been playing at. From over toward the hoop, Cal heard Jack and Jose shuffle to a stop, and Jose said, Sorry, man, tried to pass to you, and he left off the rest. What else needed saying? It became clear what had happened. The ball had taken an errant bounce, or Jose hadn't noticed Kyle lose his glasses, and his head was in the wrong place at the wrong time. An accident. It still sucked. Cal shrugged and pushed himself to his feet. His knees and the palms of his hands felt sore and scraped, a shallow pool next to the ocean of hurt that was his nose, and he felt his left knee pop slightly as he reached his feet. Any of you guys see my glasses? The blurry shapes that Kyle could just recognize as Jose and Jack swiveled around. Jack had on a red shirt and black shorts, Jose green and gray. After a second, Jack said, yeah, and bounded over to a place a few feet over to Kyle's left. Jack held out his hand, and a few seconds later, Kyle had his glasses on, to the protest of his nose, and the world came back into existence. It was a sunny day, but then it was almost always sunny in San Diego. White puffy clouds dotted the sky at mid-altitude, moving slowly to the east 
from the prevailing winds. A bit after noon, the March day was well into the mid-70s. Especially by the sea and ocean beach, where they were playing, it almost never got much warmer than that, even in the depths of summer. The court they were playing on was one of three set up in a recreational area just off the beach. Behind their hoop, past a bathroom building, the seaside road carried a stream of cars past a two-story blocky apartment complex directly ahead, and then a long line of single-story beach bungalow-style houses that cost more than Cal even wanted to consider in today's markets. Opposite their hoop, the gray-white sand ran down to the beach where the surf was breaking, lending the faint scent of brine to the gentle offshore breeze, and girls were sunning themselves. A few wetsuit-clad surfers were braving the waves, small as they were, and further north a half a mile or so, people were running their dogs along the surf at the dog beach. The other two courts were taken by larger groups who were playing full court. Cal and his buddies were just doing half court, but even still he had been working up a sweat. His shirt, a blue and white keepsake from last year's San Diego half marathon, was plastered to his chest. You good to go, bro, Jose said. He was a head taller than Kyle and all lean muscle. The only one of their group who could actually dunk. He kept his black hair trimmed short, almost in high and tight, and he had gold hoop earrings in both ears. A black tattoo of a crucifix adorned his left forearm, and he sported a tiny tuft of hair at the end of his chin. Jose was looking at Kyle with a mixture of concern and eagerness to continue. Kyle reached up to touch his nose again and winced. Then he winced a bit more when his fingers came away red. His nose was bleeding. I'm going to go sit down for a minute, he said, and Jose nodded. There's some ice in the cooler, Jack said. They had placed their cooler and bags down on the side of the court adjoining the parking lot for the beach. Kyle gave a little wave to his friends, then turned toward it. Behind it, he heard the ball begin to bounce again, then the swoosh of chains, as one of the other guys, probably Jack, dropped it in. Nothing but net. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. Sarah was reading a paperback, the latest Cussler, in her folding beach chair. The sunlight bathed her in a pleasant warmth, giving her a sense of calm that balanced the frenetic pace of the book's action, leaving her in a state of pure enjoyment. She and her friends had picked a spot back from the surf near the basketball courts, Sarah had insisted she had no desire to go into the bone-cold water that graced San Diego's shores, and a couple times in the past, people running past closer to the surf had kicked sand onto her stuff. She liked the beach, but hated sand, so she never went near the surf anymore. Back a ways where she could still get a good view of things, but also not suffer such calamities again suited her just fine. Carol and Dina thought her silly, but they didn't fight her on it much. It helped that there were often a bunch of cute guys playing on the courts, Sarah supposed. She hadn't been paying attention today, though. Her book was nearing its climax, and she was fully sunk down into it. Dina's comment pulled her out of it, though, the ER nurse in her forcing her to pay attention. What? She looked to the right toward Dina, raising a questioning eyebrow. Dina was the looker of their trio of friends. Taller than either Sarah or Carol, with naturally bronzed skin, flowing black hair and boobs that strained the straps of the black bikini top she was wearing. The guys always seemed to get sucked into her chest, but Sarah was actually thankful she didn't have to deal with being so busty. The back strain alone would probably be tiresome. Dina had her golden framed reflective sunglasses on, but she had them pushed up onto her forehead, and she was looking off to the left, toward the quartz. She pointed toward the closest one. That guy just took a basketball to the face. Wincing, Sarah turned to follow Dina's extended finger and immediately saw what she was talking about. The guy was on the short side, maybe 5'8", not something Sarah had an issue with since she was all of 5'1", but she knew for a fact Dina would never look at him twice. Six feet or nothing was her standard. And he was fairly nice looking too, short sandy hair, good shoulders, and he didn't have a beer gut. It looked like the shirt he was wearing was from a running event, so that was a plus. But those speculative thoughts vanished when she zeroed in on his nose. It was bleeding quite a lot and it looked like it was cocked to the side, probably broken from what she could see from about 30 feet away. She didn't realize she was on her feet until she had taken a step toward them and Carol said, Where are you going? Sarah looked at her, blonde and pale skinned in a red and white striped bikini, and for a second she didn't know the answer. Then she realized she was holding the first aid kit that she always packed into her beach bag. Must have grabbed it by instinct and she held it up for her friends to see. Professional obligations, she said, and Carol gave a little chuckle. She was obviously rolling her eyes behind her sunglasses. The cooler was stocked with beer cans, mostly Mike Hess Steel Beach, 
but with a few lesser brews thrown in to appease Jose's poor taste in beer, and ice cubes. The ice had begun to melt, making it easy to grab a couple cubes out. Pressing them to Kyle's nose brought an immediate relief to the throbbing pain that shot from it, but not enough to make him feel enthusiastic about his prospects of not having to go to the ER. Great way to ruin a Sunday afternoon, and he really didn't want to have to deal with the hours of just waiting to get told to put some tape on his nose and take some ibuprofen for the next week. That's what an ER trip for something like this always seemed to amount to, so what was the point of even going? To rule out something even worse, said that little voice in the back of his head. And so Chief doesn't yell at you about it tomorrow, said a louder one. He was just about to tell his friends he was going when a low-pitched female voice from off to the right said, Do you need some help? He turned and found himself unable to speak for a moment. If there could be said to be a girl who exactly fit his type, it would be this girl. She is what guys lovingly call a spinner. Short, slender, but just curvy enough in all the right spots. Spots that the soft pink string bikini she was wearing showed off nicely. Her hair was dark brown and pulled back in a ponytail. She hid on round, framed black sunglasses, and her red-brown lips were turned up ever so slightly in a mixture of friendliness and concern. In her left hand was a zipped-up bag with a first-aid kit's red cross on a white field emblazoned on its side, which she held up for him to see clearly. He realized he was staring and shrugged to hide it. You noticed, huh? I'm thinking about going to the ER. She shook her head. For something like that, they'll just set your nose, tape it up, and tell you to take ibuprofen for a week. She closed the lid of his cooler and gestured toward it. Here, sit down, let me have a look at it. The way she repeated his thoughts verbatim took him aback for a second. Then he chuckled and did as she said. You a doctor? She squatted down and unzipped her first aid bag. At his words, she shook her head. ER nurse. Even better, he said, earning a grin from her in reply. Take your glasses off, she said as she pulled out some tape, cotton balls, and a couple sealed alcohol wipes from her bag. He complied, and the world became blurry again. Those glasses really didn't do him justice. They weren't bad per se, but he was much better looking without them. Or he would be if the bottom half of his face wasn't covered in blood from his nose. But Sarah liked to think that she was better than to look merely at the externals, so she noticed the way the sunlight glinted off his green-blue eyes and decided that yes, he was much better looking without the glasses. But that nose was definitely broken. She set the cotton balls, wipes, and tape down next to him atop the cooler and reached out toward his face. This is probably going to hurt a little. I'm not made of porcelain, he replied, and she chuckled. He did flinch when she touched his nose, but not much. A quick probing found the break, and she decided to just go for it. She grabbed, pulled, and twisted. Ow, he said, and recoiled. For a second, it looked like he was going to fall backwards off the cooler and onto the pavement, and she grabbed his shoulders to stop him. His momentum stopped, and for a second, she was looking into his eyes from just over a foot away. She swallowed and looked away, releasing his shoulder. Come on, didn't hurt that much, you big baby. She tore open one of the wipes and proceeded to clean up the blood from his mouth and chin. How did you not see the ball coming? Glasses fell off. I bent over to get them and... The guy shrugged. I need to get another lanyard for them. My last one broke and I've been putting off getting a new one. Sarah shook her head and made a sympathetic face. Guess you won't be putting it off any longer, huh? Nope. The blood was mostly gone now. She took one of the cotton balls and tore it in half, then put half in each of his nostrils. Then she applied tape in two places on the bridge of his nose. Sarah straightened and took a half step back, then folded her arms over her chest and surveyed her work. Not too bad. He'd be black and blue by morning, but should be just fine. You can put your glasses back on now. He did so and grinned at her. Nice to see you again. He reached up and felt at his nose and the tape. That's it? As long as you don't put your face in front of any more basketballs for a couple weeks. He laughed, and she had the impression of honest good nature and humor from it, and from him. I'll do my best, he said. He touched his nose again and winced. Well, thanks. I'm Kyle, by the way. Sarah. She took his extended hand and gave it a shake. She had a good grip. Pretty and good with her hands. Good combination. Thanks, Sarah. Want a beer? Least I can do. He gestured toward the cooler, and she nodded. He retrieved two of the steel beach cans, handed one to her, then opened his own and took a long drink. It was a blonde ale, smooth and crisp. In the afternoon's warmth and after the throbbing in his nose, his coolness as he swallowed felt like relaxation itself flowing into him. She sipped at hers and nodded approval. Well, take care of that nose, she said, and turned to go. 
He admired the view of her from behind as she stepped away toward her friends. A part of him said to just let it go, get back to his game. But man, she was cute. Hey, he said, and she paused, looking back at him with a questioning expression. You want to go over to the OB Beach Club and get some fish tacos? Why do you said that? He hated fish tacos. But the beach club was well known for their great tacos. They had some non-fish ones, too. So what the hell? Surprise flashed through Sarah, but she shouldn't have been. In that second, when they had locked eyes, she could see the interest within those cute orbs of his. Part of her said no, she didn't want anything to do with some random guy she just met. She just wanted to get back to Cussler and her friends. But the earnest expression on Kyle's face, and the goofy way he looked just then with the tape and cotton balls in his nose that she had put there, and the way he did fill out that half-marathon shirt fairly nicely, she hadn't gone on a date in a while, not since breaking up with Jaime two months ago. She told herself she hadn't felt the lack, but right then, looking at Kyle, she realized that was a lie. So what the hell? Sure, she said. He grinned broadly, and she went to retrieve her beach bag. Then she walked beside him to get some tacos. And maybe something more. Like I said, it's a cute little story. It's a short romance. Short romances are like that, just the meat cute. If this was going to be expanded out to a full romance novel, it'd be, they would meet, it'd be, they would, first you'd meet each of them separately, then they would meet, and then they'd, you know, start doing stuff and get along and fall in love and go kissy kissy or whatever. And then the conflict would happen. Something would happen. They'd be, they'd get a big fight, they'd break up, and the rest of the book would be with them resolving that and then coming back together in the end for the kissy kissy and happily ever after in a short romance you just you, you just say hey they met it's cute uh, thus it's called a meet cute see how that works anyway so i hope you guys enjoyed that I, it's always fun to write these sort of things and um yeah i mean we'll be doing more of those in the future i've already done a bunch of for those in the past which you guys have heard before more to come but next week will not be one of those. Ooh, next week is the fifth story from 52 Stories 2023, Volume 1. It's called Cosmic Pizza. And this goes into Cosmic Eldritch Horror, set in a pizzeria. So, that'll be great. Naturally, it's going to involve Hawaiian pizza. Right? Pizza with pep with pineapples on it. Ugh. I actually don't mind that so much. <laughs> but I know some people consider it to be the you know, the sign of the apocalypse. But yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, so come back here next Saturday, we'll read that story. It's gonna be fun, you'll like it. Just like you like all the other ones. In the meantime, since you like the stories, you like me, you want to support the channel, how should you do that? Well, obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube or Rumble or wherever, you should obviously like the video. You should obviously subscribe to the channel. If you're listening to it on the on the audio podcast, same goes for that. But beyond that, all these stories that you liked are contained in books that I have written, whether it be this book or some other. And the best way to support the author that you like is to go buy the books best place to buy the books from me is michaelkingswood.com slash store why is that the best place because it's my company my store i mean the company owns the store i own the company you know how that goes anyway uh we get the books directly to you through uh, various channels and cut out the middleman right more money straight to the artist that you like and get to read the books stories that you like it's great uh, and it's super convenient too. I've got ways, uh, I've got things set up so you can, if you do the ebook, gets sent directly to your device. And of course, paperback, you know, gets mailed to you. Audiobook, you download it and do what you want with it. So it's not, not, not any harder. You just got to, you know, take a step away from Amazon and the rest and come over to me. Now, that said, if you want to go to Amazon and the rest instead of coming straight to me, you can do that. Uh, my books are up everywhere. Go to michaelkingswood.com slash books to read, the number two, and that will get you to a universal book link site where you can scroll through my various titles, click on the one you want. It'll take, it'll show you what stores it's available on. You can click on which store and go with the, go to whichever one you want to go to and get it to Heart's Delight. And some of those stores have, um, 
been set up with, uh, what do you call uh, b -b 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 affiliate links of mine since I control all that stuff and I get a little bit of extra money from that too. So that's nice. Either way, my books, it's great. If you don't want anyone to do that, but you like the podcast, and you like to read, and you just want to do the podcast, and it's a, you want to be here, the story is read, but you still want to support, you can go over to Subscribe Star, which I have set up. You can uh, leave a couple bucks a month to support the podcast. Leave a couple more bucks a month, and I'll send you an extra story a month. Leave a couple more bucks a month, I'll send you an extra story a week. And it goes on for that. So, all kinds of ways to support. Uh, and, of course, tell all your friends about the cool stuff we're doing around here. Uh, is that enough sales pitch for you for now? Probably. So, we're going to leave it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Hope you like the story. Come back next week, and we'll do the next one. Until then, don't do anything I wouldn't do.